This is life in late stage capitalism. I wake up at 8 a.m. and immediately get hit with my morning thought advertisement. Drink Sheboinky juice. Half the calories, twice the Sheboink. I then fight my eight roommates for space. Since Zillow now owns 100% of homes, this is our only option for living. For breakfast, my duplicate brings me my morning ration of trough slop, 100% processed. Then I go to my job as a full-time plasma donor. To pass the time, I watch my favorite 24-7 live stream. Yo, it's dystopian, and today we're going to be siphoning memory from a duplicate. Hopefully there's something good. Oh, childhood trauma. That's whack. Just then, world-famous lonely hand model Mimi Moneybags walks in. Looks like she's doing a make-a-wish for a 36-year-old man dying of diabetes. I... <laughs> hey, hey. It's not late-stage capitalism. It's literally the UN 2030 globalist vision of what they're carrying out. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. My name's Luke Radowski here of YouTube.com forward slash We Are Changed. And there's a lot of absolutely wild and bewildering news out there that is frustrating but also highlighting this deliberate demoralization and destruction of Western civilization, which, of course, we're going to be talking about symbolically with what just happened at the opening Olympic ceremony that is bringing up a lot of very important questions that the general public is now finally starting to ask as... Politically, there's also a lot of tumultual, big money chaos, as I am here in Nashville, Tennessee, where Donald Trump just gave a speech at the Bitcoin conference. Lots of very interesting developments here on the ground. We're going to be talking about that, plus a lot more, all here on this independent media organization. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing, you could get it on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. And the amazing sketch that we watched in the beginning of this broadcast was done by Content Machine. They have multiple channels on multiple platforms, and they are absolutely worth following. And we will be linking their work down in the description below as we played only a segment of the larger kind of vision. And again, we don't ag agree with, with, you know, some of the things they said, but the way that they portrayed the, the future is absolutely the future that a lot of very powerful, prominent people plan for you to have. So go check these guys out. Subscribe to their channel. They do awesome work. As, of course, our politicians are selling us down the river because of all the big, huge money corporate interests that control our political circus that, of course, we are all going through. As CBS News today is reporting that Kamala Harris has raised nearly $200 million just in the first week alone. As a lot of people are questioning where these donations are coming from, the Kamala Harris campaign likes to say that they're from small donors, when in reality, they're not. They're from mega players, mega donors, and of course, special interest groups that are able to buy off our politicians as the Democratic Party has been the corporatist party and truly representing a larger kind of cultural shift in our society where they will do whatever they're told. On the other side, though, you have Donald Trump that has been appealing to the younger, more tech-savvy voter, as, of course, he was just speaking at the Bitcoin conference here in Nashville, Tennessee, where I actually was in attendance. Where, humble brag, I actually got to hang out with uh, Dr. Ron Paul, who's an incredible individual, and warned us about the larger financial takeover of our society for many decades now. And if we would have listened, the world would have been completely different. But we didn't. As Donald Trump has promised to set up a U.S. Bitcoin reserve, while also pledging to make the United States the crypto capital of the world, as he also promised to fire Gary Gensler of the SEC, as he described the democratic policy towards Bitcoin as the disaster, and that, quote, if they win again, every one of them will be gone. This has thousands of Bitcoiners literally camped out for hours just to see Donald Trump there speak. And it's fair to say after his speech, especially after saying that he would free Ross Ulbricht and pardon him on day one, that he definitely was able to galvanize not just a new fundraising machine, but also a new group of voters that, of course, will be supporting him this election cycle. An election cycle that, according to Simon Hirsch, also had a bloodless coup that happened to, of course, the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, allegedly 
by Barack Obama, the former president of the United States, highlighting who's really in charge here. Who really has, has the power here? Does a former president have more power than the current president of the United States? Well, according to Simon Hirsch, yes. And it was Barack Obama that was, quote, deeply involved with Nancy Pelosi, with Chuck Schumer, that were ready to invoke the 25th Amendment if the current president of the United States did not back out of the presidential election this year. Now, is that exactly what happened here? Well, Simon Hirsch um, gets some things right sometimes, and it's hard to verify any of this because it's all from uh, anonymous sources, which, again, we should always question, especially when we have information that potentially could be used for larger disinformation purposes. All of this is there are still some major looming questions about the government's involvement in the attempted taking of the life of another former president of the United States, as, of course, this election cycle is... Really good for t-shirt sales. <laughs> Not to be as, as, as kind of cut and dry, but we do have the best political shirts.com and there's a lot of just absolutely wild and crazy stuff unfolding that, of course, we, we're detailing through satirical, comedic memes, humor that, of course, you could wear on your shirt, just like I'm wearing right now, and do your own form of lazy journalism. We just released a whole bunch of t-shirts this week, um, majority of which we can't share you here on this platform, because if we did, uh, this video would get absolutely taken down. This is a somewhat a, a safe one, but again, I even reluctantly don't even want to say what, what, what this is saying, but this is the kind of official, unofficial Kamala Harris uh, and Pete Buttigieg 2024 political <laughs> shirt that, of course, will, will get a lot of support, especially in major uh, Democratic urban areas. We, of course, have another one highlighting with Donald Trump from the infamous day where some powerful individuals tried to, of course, take his life. And again, we have so many different shirts. We have so many different expressions that are absolutely hilarious. Go check them out as, of course, this is a great way to support independent media. But more importantly, this is a great way to start conversations. There's a lot of t-shirts. There's a lot of designs. There's a lot of ideas that we cannot express on the internet, on this particular platform, but you can by wearing a t-shirt that still can't be censored. And fighting the censorship that's happening on, on YouTube and on Facebook and all these other big tech social media organizations is an uphill battle. I can only do so much, but you could do a lot, not just by sharing this video and getting activated and getting involved here, but more importantly, just getting a freaking t-shirt. And we have long sleeves, short sleeves, tank tops, women's shirts, you name it. We got it. Got it. All on the bestpoliticalshirts.com. As soon as you go on the main page here, right here down below, we have all long sleeves, women's t-shirts, tank tops, you name it. Great shirts, great gag gifts. Even if you're just trying to troll, if, troll in real life, <laughs> even if you're looking for a pretty wild kind of, uh, you know, birthday present, whatever it may be. This is it, thebestpoliticalshirts.com. And at the same time, you support us being able to, of course, provide you these broadcasts and to communicate with you as effectively as we can. Again, check them all out exclusively on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Click them right now, and I will see you there right afterwards. As there was a very interesting exchange recently on Twitter with the president of El Salvador announcing, quote, what is the West fighting for? Declaring this a couple of days ago with Elon Musk saying, good question. I think civilization in general should seek to increase consciousness and explore the stars in order to understand the universe with Bukele kind of responding. Yeah, yeah, human space exploration. Okay. As he says, quote, most people in the West viewed the future with optimism. Nowadays, many look at the future with disappointment or even with sadness and despair. And uh, especially with the introduction video that we kind of played here, it does seem like there's a kind of, you know, fifth generational war happening out there, a larger information battle brewing right now, a demoralization effort that is meant to keep people fat, dumb, and stupid. Yeah, it's almost as if that's a conspiracy. Like it's like it's like right in front of our face. Like like it's like they're just bragging about the destruction of our society. And that's exactly what they're doing. And in my opinion, exactly what they kind of represented at the opening Olympics ceremony 
that highlighted a lot of very kind of weird ritualistic occult symbology that a lot of people were perturbed by. Now, the corporate media is, is trying to make fun of people for, of course, talking about this. They're attacking Don Jr. They're attacking Andrew Tate. They're attacking Christians, saying, oh, you guys are crazy, as we literally mock your religion and poke fun at you and, of course, push radical ideas that are pretty disturbing. As some people are saying that this opening ceremony was an open satanic ritual. Now, whatever you might think of that kind of terminology and understanding, these are the arguments that some people are making online right now. As their interpretation of everything is that this was a larger kind of representation of demonic dark forces of Satan that want to, of course, make fun of Christianity, make fun of family values, and, of course, promote larger degeneracy and short-term dopamine behavior that promotes opulence and egocentric self-gratification, as, of course, we got representation of a lot of morbid uh, images of, of death, especially with Marie Antoinette with her uh, head literally in her hands. We got a bunch of skulls. We got representation of children trapped in tunnels. We got a single rider on a pale horse out of biblical prophecy from Revelation 6-8 that reads, quote, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. That's, again, biblical prophecy with what many people view as themes that were played upon by a lot of these kind of opening ceremonies that no longer hid a lot of the larger messaging of the controlled establishment society, but put it to you in plain sight. And from my understanding, there is a larger kind of bragging. There is a larger kind of moment, temperament, and feel of people rubbing this in our face and, of course, just openly shoving it down our throats, leaving many people to, of course, question wh wh why. Why are they doing this? As, of course, there was also other disturbing moments throughout this entire ceremony that literally included a, a man dressed in female clothes with his balls hanging out. The man, of course, seen throughout the ceremony, specifically paying a lot of attention to a small child that was there, talking to the small child as a small child was dancing with uh, dudes that were carrying out their fetishes on live kind of television. Dudes dressed in um, female undergarments, as of course the child was the center of attention, which highlights a larger kind of innocence of our society that was being kind of denigrated and influenced by what a lot of people call bad influences, fetishized, perverse influences, which does represent the larger kind of hijacking of our society that we have seen culturally in, in movies, TV shows, the social media algorithms, ideas that, of course, are even promoted in schools for some reason now in many parts of the Western world, especially in all the liberal areas. What's really going on here? Well, that's a question that a lot of people have on their minds, as, of course, the opening ceremony also, according to some people, mocked the Last Supper which uh, clearly was a larger representation of shifting Jesus Christ to a fat, morbidly obese, degenerate woman with her bazungas sticking out, surrounded, of course, by the single child and dudes dressed in female undergarments. Another very interesting representation was, of course, the Statue of Liberty that was also beat up and haggard to say the least, that was shown for a short few seconds during the opening ceremony. But uh, it, it's fair to say, especially with this representation here, that there was a larger kind of play on the religious aspects and spiritual aspects of our society here that, of course, were played up upon by whoever orchestrated and organized this ceremony to, of course, have such important images to the general public that, of course, were meant to, of course, play and evoke their emotions, their feelings, and largely, in part, this was a demoralization effort, in my opinion, that highlighted the larger hijacking and destruction of Western civilization. And again, half-naked people living out their 
fantasies, adult fantasies with children for the entire world to watch is disturbing, to say the least. So is this larger play on mocking, making fun of Christians and individuals who, of course, believe in Jesus Christ. As this has been an overwhelming theme by a lot of very powerful, dark forces in our society that like to denigrate Christianity, the belief of Jesus Christ, which is an all-too-common theme right now, especially in mainline culture, especially every time you turn on the television. As again, the corporate media is trying to make fun of people for having concerns here, and I think the people having concerns here are legitimate. Now, do I take it as far as some other people? Probably not, as of course a lot of people in entertainment, a lot of people in the Hollywood industry, a lot of people in the upper echelons of our world ritualistically do worship the devil, do worship Satan, and do carry out ceremonies and rituals, sometimes in plain sight, in order to highlight their larger gratification and love of Lucifer, of death, of evil. And looking around, especially with the sociopath in charge right now, it makes sense. And you see it all around you, and I think we saw it during the Olympics. And that's just my own two cents. That's my extrapolation. That's my own personal opinion. What do you think this was really all about? Was it just really all an innocent play, highlighting the, the fractured realities of, of our society? Uh, was this a larger kind of satanic ritual that highlighted the larger hijacking and destruction of our current society? As, of course, the Russians are even mocking this with their own kind of uh, acclaimed uh, version of how the Olympics will go in the future, as there's a lot of world leaders, there's a lot of people, religious leaders, speaking out against this, as, of course, people are warning about the self-destructive path that we are on. I would even say the evil path that we are on, as, of course, that's, that's a true representation of the forces of darkness, destruction, and the absolute obliteration of anything beautiful and holy. And I think there's a reason around us we're seeing less and less beautiful things. That reason is concerning, in my opinion. If it's concerning for you, share this video with your friends and family members. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, and that's why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on youtube.com forward slash we are change. Get a shirt right now. The best political shirts.com. See you there.